I got you a dynamite gig right up your alley. You and a priest on Christianity and Judaism. They want to establish an interfaith dialogue. Woody says, but I'm no expert on Judaism. He says, that's the beauty part. You don't have to be. They want you to take a dive. <laughs> that's a joke from his joke book. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Rationalizations and narcissism. See, I could have called the book that. Yeah. Private journal entry number three. Oh, by the way, there's a whole section of private journals, which you will love. Why do all the women in my life say I'm a lousy lover? How can they make a definitive judgment in only three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> the syndicate didn't even get up to hating that one. They didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Freud's last resort, Dr. Phobic. I love Dr. Phobic. Okay. I feel I've come to a dead end in my psychoanalysis. It's time for me to quit. No, wait a second. Uh, let me, she's thinking, $60,000 mortgage at 10.5% over 20 years. Let's see. He's been a patient for 19 and a half years. You need to give it six more months. <laughs> <laughs> but Woody, uh, hold it a minute. Woody, Woody loved psychoanalysis. He went six times a day. He, there was one joke he gave me. Uh, he, he said, uh, he used to do this in his routine, and you may remember it, Dick. Uh, uh, I called my psychiatrist. I said, Dr. Rubin, I'm depressed. I'm at the top of the Empire State Building. I'm going to jump off and kill myself. Dr. Rubin said, that's fine, but if you do, you'll pay for the sessions you miss. <laughs> a little bitterness there. Okay, slide. Uh, uh, this is in the mirror world. Let's see it. <clears throat> Politically, I'm a liberal, but I admit I would like to date girls who work for the Pentagon. I figure, what are the odds of their having any morals? <laughs> now, that's a very, very, it's funny, but it's a very deep political commentary. I mean, that's a terrific yeah. joke. You know, they hated it. Press on. Uh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, good. Hey, we Stu, could... did they knock any out completely and just, no matter how you f argued? I, I don't recall that they ever threw any out, but, but yeah. in the book, uh, I, I, I tell some of the syn what, what the syndicate said. I also had their memos. I was like the CIA of comics. Can we get a little light on here so you can see our, our great faces? Um, anyway, I, I don't recall they threw stuff out, but they kept nagging me so that I couldn't do certain so things. So you identified with Fred Allen. Oh, to deal did with I ever. And it went through. In case you don't know, Fred Allen was, of course, a radio comedian in the 30s and 40s, and he was the only comedian who was censored because he talked about current events and about people. But we won't get into that now. No, we won't need to. If you get Stu and me quoting Fred Allen, you'll never get out of here. <laughs> but here's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's my favorite. Anyone oh. here old enough to remember Milton Berle? Yeah. yeah, okay. Fred Allen f really failed in television, <laughs> uh, king of radio. And when Berle's fabulous success in television, <clears throat> becoming Mr. Television, of course, him galled and embittered him. Two words that he put together expressed this. I think it was in a letter to Groucho who may have asked him, what do you think of Milton Berle's great success? And he said, Milton is the moron's messiah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to know about Fred Allen. Well, now, do you have any questions about this? Or yeah. Dick Cavett? <laughs> no, anything at all. Yes, sir. How much input? Wait. Sorry. We'll repeat how, your question. How, how much input did Woody have into these, into these cartoons? Was well, he, was I, he totally I tried to give an indication of that. He did not write it. He did not draw it. Mm -hmm. He did not go to the syndicate. He did not go to meetings. He only gave me the rights to his material, the right to do it. He was wonderful to work with. He's absolutely modest. He doesn't miss a trick. He uh, uh, works all the time. And he, he was generous to a fault. But he did yeah. not do the stuff. I took the stuff and adapted it and showed it to him and got his approval, as in fact I did for this book. You wouldn't have rather had it any other way, would you? I mean, wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> See how well I know him? <laughs> Don't you get it, folks? I had to, I, 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 of course, sent Woody the book, and, and he approved everything in it. Uh, I had a line in there. It told how, it, you'll see it in my, in, in my preface. Mm. It told how I met him. I said, and I met him at the same time I met Dick. We were all much younger then. I still am. <laughs>
um, um, uh, told how I met him. Uh, what was I going to say? I'm so far from the mothership, I can't get back. Well, while you're thinking of it, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in here the way you said okay. to whenever your mind failed. Yes. <laughs> Which is often. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, folks, I don't think either one of us wants to give the impression that being around Woody, you never heard anything funny said. It's just that he never made any effort to do or never felt any need to entertain people he knew. And certainly in business meetings, uh, he was the most professional man I've ever been around, ex with the exception maybe of Bob Hope. And even he would do jokes now and then, but a shrewd businessman. But uh, once with Woody, I just asked him a untypically personal question. I said, you know, I met your first wife, Arlene, when I first met you. Um, and you may recall that she sued him for jokes that he did about his first wife when he first started appearing on yes, television. Yes, so I'm going to put my, my, my wife under a, 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 a... What did he say? I tend to place my wife underneath a pedestal. That's it, yes. <laughs> was one of them. He said, oh, she came home and said I wrecked the car. I, I got arrested. He said, I'm sure it wasn't a moving violation. Yeah. Well, this, this was not one of his jokes. In this case, it was just... Uh, I, I said, well, you know, Harleen couldn't have been dumb. And he said, <laughs> she knew to eat. <laughs> <laughs> the thing did I was, you ever hear that? Yeah, yes, did I, I ever tell that? I, the thing I was going to tell you is that I wrote in the preface that I met Woody Allen. He had skin as white as the underbelly of a frog. He looked like nothing more than a yeshiva student inimical to physical exercise. He changed only one word in what I wrote. He, changed it, he looked, he looked uh, like a sociology student. Mm -hmm. Interesting, doctor. The, the fact is, um, on a show of mine, he was on my show eight or nine or ten times, and um, for early on especially we used to do physical stuff of, I beg limited, your well, of a limited nature on the air. <laughs> but at one point I dared him to take his shirt off. I did the same thing with Kirk Douglas on an earlier show, and I said, Kirk Douglas didn't, you don't have to. He didn't. But had he, you would have been quite surprised. He was extremely athletically well-built, in very, very good shape, and a splendid athlete and an excellent boxer. And once on a show, I think either of mine or a Tonight Show he hosted, he did three rounds with uh, Jose Torres or some boxer. No, that was with Jose Ferrer. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, but he was always a superb athlete. Um, he but, but, but he didn't take his shirt off because it would have <laughs> messed up his image. <laughs> That's a sh anyway, are there more questions or comments? Yes, I can. I will repeat the question or do you have... Uh, good, look at that. Yeah. Miss Christine is there with the microphone. Oh, um, hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> just wondered, you didn't actually say how you met Woody. Um, I was curious about that and also why you thought he would make a good um, comic strip when he's not a real ha-ha mm. guy. Well, he's ha-ha to the public. Very good. Yeah. You asked uh, how I met him. It's in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he'd make a comic strip because, as Dick said, because he does these wonderful <laughs> punchlines. You know, the wonderful stuff. Oh, my God. He talked about his, that first wife was Harleen Rosen. He said she was one of the village girls. They wore black. They had pierced wrists. Do you remember that? Yeah, I've forgotten that. And he, in his early things, he said, I got, I got kicked out of college for cheating with the dean's wife. <laughs> Uh, also, I cheated in philosophy class. I peered into the soul of the boy next to me. I was captured in my freshman year by a girl's sorority. They held me prisoner on the third floor of their sorority house. That semester, I flunked everything except anatomy. So when I heard stuff like that, even I, dense as I am, thought, wow, you know, that would keep me from working. That's how. Next question. The truth is, Stu's still waiting to meet Woody, but <laughs> keep that in Yes, in the back. <laughs> uh, can, you what, can you get a mic to that man? Yell it out and we'll repeat it for get the it, people who can't hear it. Oh. Speak into one uh, end of the microphone. Uh, the question is, would he or wouldn't he? You take it. <laughs> would he or wouldn't he? No, I don't do that yeah. kind of puns here. Okay. Any, <laughs> Im any impersonal questions? Uh, any, any questions here about the comic strip or about Woody he or would. about Dick Cavett? 
Anything at all. Yes, I see a yeah, hand up here. I recently came across material that I was staggered that he wrote and touched upon in terms of he does when I was kidnapped.